The most secret teachings of the secret societies are transmitted only orally. Other parts are written in a deliberately obscure way that makes it impossible for outsiders to understand. For example, it might be possible to deduce the secret doctrine from Helena Blavatsky's prodigiously long and obscure book of the same name, or from the twelve volumes of G.I. Gudjeff's allegory, All and Everything, Beelzebub's Tales to His Grandson, or from the six hundred or so volumes of Rudolf Steiner's writings and lectures. Similarly, you might, in theory, be capable of decoding the great alchemical texts of the Middle Ages, or the esoteric tracts of high-level initiates of later periods, such as Paracelsus, Jakob Bema, or Immanuel Swedenborg. But in all these cases, the writing is aimed at people already in the know. These texts aim to conceal as much as they reveal. I have been looking for a concise, reliable, and completely clear guide to the secret teachings for more than twenty years. I have decided to write one myself because I am convinced that no such book exists. It is possible to find self-published books and websites that claim to do it, but like collectors in any field, those who browse in bookshops on a spiritual quest soon develop a nose for the real thing— and you only have to dip into these books and sites to see there is no guiding intelligence at work, no very great philosophical training, and very little hard information. This history, then, is the result of nearly twenty years' research. Books such as Mysterium Magnum, a commentary on Genesis by the mystic and Rosicrucian philosopher Jacob Bema, together with books by his fellow Rosicrucians, Robert Flood, Paracelsus, and Thomas Vaughan, have been key sources— as well as modern commentaries on their work by Rudolf Steiner and others. But crucially, I have been helped to understand these sources by a member of more than one of the secret societies, someone who, in the case of one secret society at least, has been initiated to the highest level. I had been working for years as an editor for one of London's largest publishers, commissioning books on a wide range of more or less commercial subjects, and sometimes also indulging in my interest in the esoteric. In this way I have met many leading authors working in the field. One day a man walked into my office who was clearly of a different order of being. He had a business proposition that we should reissue a series of esoteric classics, alchemical texts and the like, to which he would write new introductions. We quickly became firm friends and spent a lot of time together. I found I could ask him questions about more or less anything, and he would tell me what he knew. Amazing things. In retrospect, I think he was educating me, preparing me for initiation.'